All right, so in our last video, we showed you how to create a virtual network uh, relatively quickly. Uh, and in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to continue on the exercise of showing you how to integrate into your network by now creating a virtual machine. And for those who don't know, a virtual machine is basically a PC that's sitting in the cloud. Um, it's software-defined uh, PC, so everything is all software-driven. There is a physical machine somewhere uh, along the chain, uh, but you interact with a software version of that machine that's virtualized using a hypervisor of some kind. And Azure provides you the capability of creating these virtual machines and using them to basically host whatever you want. A VM would basically give you full control over everything, right? So that means that, you know, after the OS, everything else that's in here, you are going to have to install. Whereas an app service, so you're going to install all of this and you're going to put your code in here. Um, so this is your code. Uh, but you also have to install any additional software that needs to be installed there, right? So software, etc. With an app service, you just focus on your code. And the uh, underlying virtual machine, app service plan, so here's your code. But this part is managed by Microsoft. So you don't have to worry about it. The runtime manages it. In and you don't worry about it. You don't have to patch it. You don't have to do anything. All those things you would have to do with a VM. And a container is somewhere in between. It gives you some more control over the underlying um, platform that your code is running on, but it does not give you the level of control uh, that you get with a virtual machine. So a container would be somewhere in between this and this. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to just create the virtual machine. Just like that. And we're putting it in demonstrations too. We can call it whatever we want. So demo two. We're not going to be using availability zones, so there's no infrastructure um, redundancy. Uh, basically, availability zones, and I think we talked about it in a previous video, so go back and look at my videos on virtual machines. I have a full video on virtual machines. But basically, when you create an Azure uh, resource, you can put it into a region, right? And any region is going to be made up of potentially three data centers, right? One, two, three, and that's what constitutes the region. And then there's some connectivity between the data centers that allow them to interact with each other. Typically, when you add a resource uh, to a region, you're putting it in one of these data centers. Um, now, what happens if that data center, for whatever reason, goes down? You basically lose that resource. So an alternative is that you can actually deploy it into multiple of these data centers. And these data centers are what we would call an availability zone, right? So each one is a zone. So there's one, two, three zones. When you deploy it to all of them, uh, then you have full redundancy. So if this goes down and this goes down, then that's still running. So in this case, we're not going to be using any. So I'm going to remove that. Now we specify the username and the password. And of course, we're going to have RDP open. Now, when it comes to licensing, um, by default, if you have a license, you can transfer that license over to your cloud instance. 
But by default, it just uses, it'll just charge you a license and embed it into the cost of the resource. So we go into disks over here. We're not doing anything special. Uh, we basically we basically are going to be using 128 gig uh, premium SKU. So nothing too crazy there. Um, we're managing the keys by the platform. Um, and um, basically, I'm going to specify that if the VM gets deleted, I want to make sure that I also delete this resource. We're not going to have any attached disks. So let's go on over to the networking. So here's the cool part here, because basically over here is where you take the virtual machine that we've just created or that we're going to be creating and you put it into the network that we already have specified, right? So I want to put this in here and I want to put it in a specific subnet inside of here. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So we're specifying that we want it in the base uh, subnet, the default subnet. Uh, we do want to have a public IP actually. So we want to make sure that the NIC, the network interface card that gets created with this, uh, basically gets deleted. Um, we're going to specify a new public IP address for this. And we go over to management. There's pretty much nothing here, uh, nothing special here. Go to monitoring. Again, we're going to use just the default. Uh, and under advanced, we're not really doing anything special here. Now we may have another video where we talk through all the things you can do with a virtual machine. Um, but for now, let's quickly get through here. And then we can click create to create it. Okay, so it looks like that's created. Uh, so we can go in here and we can actually connect uh, to it. Now there's two ways to connect to it. One of them is using a bastion and the other is using um, just a normal RDP. So we're gonna use RDP here because this is a public IP that's been created. Now keep in mind here before you sign in that in order for you to use a um, VM directly and connect to it over the public web, you do have to have an NSG uh, defined on the uh, network interface card that's associated with the VM. Um, and then obviously you need a public IP address that allows you to route traffic to that VM. So those two things are needed. So we're just going to connect here. Say yes. And there we have it. We're directly connected uh, into that virtual machine, uh, which is not only accessible publicly, but also accessible to any resource that's inside of that virtual network uh, that we placed the VM in. And as you can see, there's pretty much nothing uh, special here. It's just a regular VM like any other VM. And like any other VM, uh, you're, you will likely need to um, do some work to it to make it publicly accessible. Uh, now, that being said, um, you will notice that even though this is a public facing VM, when I try to access it over the IP address that's been specified, the public facing IP address, that's not gonna work. Now in future videos, we'll show you how to enable that and allow you to be able to access it uh, directly from outside. Um, it requires modifying the Windows firewall to enable traffic to pass through. Uh, but for now, uh, this should be fine uh, for demonstrating that we do have a VM in place and we are able to use that VM to, to connect into the network.